can bring it off your legs over to the other side. You can bring it around your head to the other side. Keep your hands kind of where they are. Just let the whips do the work. Nice and relaxed. In this video, I'm going to be talking all about the nine section chain whip we have for sale at Enzo Martial Arts. I'm going to be talking about the options that we've got, who would use these, when would be a good time to get onto the nine section chain whip, and at the end, I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks just to get you started training with the whip. Hi, my name is Doug Swift. I've been doing martial arts for the past 33 years and the owner of Enzo Martial Arts for the past 16 years. If you're liking this video, click the little icon, subscribe to this channel and get all the latest videos from Enzo Martial Arts. So let's get into this video and learn all about the nine section chain whip. So this is the nine section whip and as the name suggests, it is made out of 11 sections. So it's actually got nine sections in the middle and then it's got a handle on one end and it's got like the spike, the dart on the other end and then there's nine sections in between. So this is pretty standard for most of the nine section whips. I've seen that they are actually 11 segments. I don't know why they've done this like this. I don't quite understand it, but that's just how they do it. Now, for the three section whips, or more commonly known as the three section staffs, they are just three sections. They don't have like one bit on each end and three sections in the middle. They are just three sections. So God knows why they have 11 sections, but that's just the way it is. So what are we looking at in terms of the actual makeup of these? So like I said, we've already got the dart on the end and then you usually have three rings in between. And these also have two additional rings on the middle ring to help with that extra jangliness. And then you get a kind of tapered section in the middle and then rings all the way up. Now you only get the janglies on the beginning one and the end one, you don't get the jangly rings on the rest of them. And there we go, you get the jangly rings on the middle ring and a nice cotton wrapped handle on the metal one just to keep your hand a little bit a little bit looked after when you're spinning this around. So who uses these? What style would you use a nine section whip? Well, mainly you see Wushu guys using these. So you could say that Shaolin are part of Wushu, Ooh, controversial statement. Um, but yeah, the Shaolin guys that are doing a lot of performance stuff and the Wushu guys, they're mostly known for using these. But it is a traditional weapon, so it does exist in loads of different styles of mark martial arts so northern chinese styles and the southern chinese styles you will see these being used now as far as i know the southern styles actually use a shorter chain whip southern styles in general tend to be much more close quartered fighting you know that's kind of how they're known i know it's not strictly true but more close quarter stuff like the wing chun the hungars things like that so that in terms of their fighting range, they will use shorter, more close quarter fighting. So they use shorter nine section whips. For the for the northern stuff, you know, it's known as being a longer range style of, of martial arts. So they use they use these these this standard length. Now, in general rules, you know, you want it kind of sort of just touching the floor and come coming up to your you know chest or your chin. Now. I guess this is based on a Chinese person. So these are going to be slightly shorter for most Western people. You know, that, that rule's not going to exist, you know, really, because unless if you're getting a custom made chain whip, they are, they are following a standard length. So that's the length you get. And to be honest, it's absolutely fine to train with. Like whatever height you are, this length is perfect to train with. Now, I've always seen these one, these nine section whips as a bit of like a concealed weapon, like a, uh, an individual personal protection style weapon. So I imagine it that people would fold up all the sections and have them just kind of held in their hand or in a little pocket or tucked under a sleeve. And if they needed to use it, they can just whip it out and, and start fighting, spinning it around and causing all kinds of damage. But as far as I can tell, there are a few historical accounts of it then being used on a battlefield. Now, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near someone using this on a battlefield. I wouldn't really want to be on a battlefield, to be fair, because it, it, it's just going to be an absolute nightmare swinging this thing around. So, yeah, I've always thought of them as a personal protection thing, but they were used for that and also on battlefield 
battlefield fighting. So at Enzo Martial Arts, we do do three different weights of the nine section whip. So this one here is a middle weight section and I'll show you them in comparison so you can see all the different thicknesses. So we have the heavyweight one here, the middleweight and the lightweight. And I'll give you all the weights in a bit so you can, you've got a good idea of exactly what you're getting now in terms of using these the middleweight and heavyweight tend to be for the more traditional people people that want a bit of a workout you know even if they use the lightweight for competition or demos they might want a heavyweight for just to get that extra sort of strength in their shoulders and their arms um, but yeah this tends to be more traditional people this is a fair chunky chunky chain whip these lightweight ones are mainly going to be used by the Shaolin and Wushu guys really really fast in the air you know very very quick very difficult to see when someone's going full pelt with these that's the standard they're the, probably the most popular ones we get less of the traditional people training with these I guess usually in the traditional styles it takes longer to get onto these more advanced weapons the wushu guys you, you know after a while you tend to specialize in something so there's more people training with the lightweights than there are the heavyweights but at Enzo Martial Arts we have the three weights for sale so just having a look at the length now actually because the because the darts on the end are slightly different lengths and actually the rings are slightly different size you do get a slightly different length overall but as you can see the lightweights come in at 49 and a half inches 126 centimeters and the middleweight and the heavyweight come in at 52 inches or 132 centimeters just having a look at the weight so the lightweight weighs in at 200 grams the middleweight 420 so like more than double the weight and the heavyweight comes in at 640 so 50% heavier again so yeah quite a big weight difference so it's really worth knowing exactly what you need like I say Shaolin Wushu will go for the lightweights traditional guys will go for a middle or a heavy so at Enzo Martial Arts we pride ourselves on having a wide selection of Kung Fu training weapons so as well as the chain whips we also have a whole range of bow staffs including the Rattan bow staff without skin Tiger hook swords and the Shaolin bamboo shields. A whole range of broadswords, including the aluminium Chinese broadsword. A whole range of straight swords, including this Damascus straight sword. So, as promised at the beginning of the video, here's a few tips and tricks just to get you started with chain whips. Now, I'm going to do my best to not smash the shop to bits, so we'll see how we get on. So, I'm going to use the middleweight, but I will show you the difference with the lightweight and the heavyweights in a bit. So the first technique I think is good to get started is just simply spinning the thing side to side. So you can do just one revolution each side or you can do two each side. You know, nothing too difficult. A bit more difficult if you've got a camera to miss. But yeah, spinning it each side just gives you a really nice feel for the chain whip. Nothing difficult at all. I'm going to move this back a little bit first technique and probably the first one you'll do when starting off with chain whips is just having it under your armpit so it's very very similar to just spinning it but it's just bringing it up over your arm and moving your elbow over to the other side first so nothing too difficult nice and simple simple one to do so yeah have a play with that and see how you get on now you would have seen loads of fancy kind of swinging it around your body and it is worth having a go at that once you're really comfortable with how the chain was spinning you can literally you can bring it off your legs over to the other side you can bring it around your head to the other side you know be careful it's not the it's not the easiest of techniques it's all about timing so just spin it around back to front underneath your leg and back round to the other side so nice and nice and easy it's kind of easier fast it's easier if you've got space and you're not trying to do it in a six foot wide shop but yeah again round your neck and you can actually use your neck to guide the thing round obviously if you leave it too late this nice lovely metal spike is going to hit you in the face so it's, you know you've got to be careful and it is just getting used to it so yeah, nice and simple. Now, if I spin this round, you'll be able to hear 
it moving in the air with the lightweight you can hear you can probably see the difference and hear the difference and the heavyweight has much deeper sound in the air much harder to spin you can see I'm putting in more work that's the difference between the three so obviously the heavyweight moves slower but obviously there's a lot more weight so more training more strength involved now you will see a lot of people doing doubles and I just thought I'd just show you one of the techniques with doubles which is just getting them spinning in the air so with this you want to be spinning it twice on the other side and once on one side and you'll be doing that with both of them so you get them going in the air and try not to hit anything so you, if you have a proper look you can see I'm spinning each one twice on the opposite side and once on the on, the, on its actual side so nice spinning technique you want to keep your hands relatively in the middle try and miss the roof so yeah you keep your hands kind of where they are and just let the whips do the work nice and relaxed nothing too difficult but it's definitely worth getting used to doing that with one hand each before you move on to two so there's a few tips and tricks to get you started hope it was useful and uh yeah good luck and keep safe Thanks very much for watching, I hope it was useful. I hope you learned loads about the nine section chain whip that we have for sale at Enzo Martial Arts. If you like this video, click the little icon, subscribe to this channel and get all the latest videos from Enzo Martial Arts. Thanks very much and I'll see you soon. Cheers.